grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Poor Pentecost. I mean it. Poor Pentecost. There are three main festivals in the Christian church here. Christmas, Easter, and Pentecost. And really, it's no contest. Poor Pentecost. It's the forgotten festival. I mean, Hallmark doesn't make Pentecost cards. There's no Pentecost bunny. Santa didn't bring me any Pentecost presents this year. On the other hand, maybe that's okay. Because today, God doesn't have to compete with Santa or bunnies or eggs to get your attention. On Pentecost, we can sit quietly in church and really think about what this day means. Today, we are going to see why Pentecost is so important. The events of our text for today took place on the Jewish festival called Pentecost. Pentecost, also called the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest, was one of the three main festivals in which Jews from all over the world would travel to Jerusalem. It was when they would present to God the first fruits of the wheat harvest. Now, if you remember what we saw last Sunday, before ascending into heaven, Jesus told his disciples to stay in Jerusalem because he was going to send them a special gift of the Holy Spirit. So now it's 10 days after Jesus' ascension, 50 days after his resurrection, the day of Pentecost. The disciples are gathered together in one place when suddenly they hear the sound like that, like the blowing of a violent wind. Those of you who lived through Hurricane Carla, or those of you who have lived through a tornado know that sound, like the, the sound of a freight train going through your living room. And if that wasn't enough to get the disciples' attention, all of a sudden what looked like tons of fire separated and came to rest on each of them. In verse 4 of our text tells us that all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now, when you hear that, don't think about speaking in tongues the way some churches do today. Those tongues the disciples spoke were actual languages. And we know that because when they went out, people from all over the world heard them speaking in their native languages. So a large crowd gathered. The disciples were out there telling everyone they could about Jesus. And other people wondered, what's going on? I mean, what was even more confusing to them was that these men were uneducated fishermen from the backwater province of Galilee. And that's when, when some people started to whisper and say, oh, they're just drunk. So Peter stood up in front of everybody and addressed the crowd. He told them, we're not drunk. It's only 9 o'clock in the morning. He told them that this happened to fulfill the prophecy in the book of the prophet Joel. This was the Holy Spirit giving these men the ability to prophesy and to speak. And then Peter went on to explain to them how Jesus lived, died, and rose for them. When the crowd heard that, they asked, well, what should we do then? And Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Luke tells us that on that day, on Pentecost, 3,000 people were baptized. Why celebrate Pentecost? Because it's the birthday of the Christian church. If you wanted to give someone a Hallmark card on Pentecost, you could probably give them a, a birthday card. On Pentecost, the disciples finally started doing what Jesus had told them to do. Be his witnesses. Tell the world what he had done to save them. On that first Pentecost, the Christian church as we know it began. And in a sense, that's the greatest miracle of Pentecost. You know, people like to focus on the amazing signs and wonders of that day. You know, the sound of the violent wind, the tongues of fire, the ability to speak in other languages. But those aren't the greatest miracle of Pentecost. 
The greatest miracle of Pentecost is that Jesus' disciples actually went out and preached. Remember, this is a group of mostly uneducated fishermen and outcasts. These are the guys who were always arguing amongst themselves who of them was the greatest and most important. These are the guys who ran away on the night Jesus was arrested. I mean, where do we find them on that first Easter Sunday? Cowering behind locked doors because they were afraid of the men who killed Jesus. And then where do we find them again the next Sunday? Again behind locked doors. But now on Pentecost, they weren't afraid anymore. Now they opened the doors and went out and told people about Jesus. Now Peter, who at one point denied even knowing Jesus, stands up in the middle of a huge crowd and talks about Jesus without fear. What happened? The Holy Spirit is what happened. On that first Pentecost Sunday, the Holy Spirit gave Jesus' disciples some very special gifts to help them do their job, to help them start the church. He gave them the ability to speak in other languages so they could go and tell the whole world about him. But even more importantly, he gave them the courage to stand up and tell others what Jesus had done for them. Why is Pentecost so important? Why do we celebrate Pentecost? because it reminds us of the gifts the Holy Spirit gives. Just as God poured his Holy Spirit on his disciples on that first Pentecost, he promises to pour out his Holy Spirit on us. I mean, that's what the prophet Joel was talking about in his prophecy. Peter's point was that God promises to pour out his Holy Spirit on all believers, both men and women, young and old, from every walk of life. Now, he never promises to do it in exactly the same way he did on Pentecost. The day of Pentecost was a special gift that Jesus promised to his first disciples. You know, we shouldn't expect the sound of a hurricane or flames of fire appearing on our heads here at church. We shouldn't expect to suddenly be able to speak in Spanish or Swahili or Chinese. But we should expect the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the word spirit in the Bible, in both Hebrew and Greek, is the word for wind. The Holy Spirit is like the wind. On Pentecost, he came in a hurricane-like wind. But usually the Holy Spirit is more like a gentle breeze. We hardly notice him. It's kind of fitting that Pentecost is the forgotten festival because the Holy Spirit is often the forgotten member of the Trinity. He, he, he quietly works in our hearts and minds through his word and sacraments. I mean, we, we often don't even notice him quietly working on him as we sit and listen to his word here in church or receive Holy Communion. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes we do notice. Sometimes we do feel it. Sometimes we feel that, that hurricane of emotion as we hear about our sins and our amazing Savior who forgives us. I mean, haven't you ever come to church feeling tired, or frustrated, alone, or afraid? And as you heard God's promises, as you tasted his forgiveness, you felt peace and strength and courage. That was the Holy Spirit blowing in your heart. You see, it wouldn't actually be a bad thing for us to give gifts on Pentecost, just like, just like at Christmas. Because on Pentecost, we celebrate the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Faith, peace, strength, joy. And those aren't the only gifts the Holy Spirit gives. On that first Pentecost, he gave the gift to suddenly be able to speak in other languages so his disciples could spread his word throughout the world. But today, we don't need that specific gift anymore because God's word is being preached throughout the whole world right now. But God still does give some people the gift of to learn languages quickly and well so they can go out and tell people about Jesus. I would say God's given that gift to me. But the Holy Spirit gives each of us different gifts so we can serve him and spread his word. The Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians gives examples of the different kinds of gifts the Holy Spirit gives. Things like leadership ability, 
the gift to teach or preach, the gift of service, the gift of prayer, the gift of encouragement. God gives each of us different talents and abilities, different gifts with which we can serve him here on earth. Now, husbands, if you gave your wife a beautiful diamond ring for her birthday this year, she went home, put it in a box, and never used it, how would that make you feel? When you give somebody a gift, it makes you feel good to see them use it. The same is true with the Holy Spirit. He has given us all different gifts. He has given you, if he has given you the gift of, of working with children or teaching children, well then, help with Sunday school or VBS. If he has given you the gift of music, help sing in choir or play an instrument here in church. If he has given you the gift to fix things, well, help fix the toilets or the roof or the air conditioning. If he has given you the gift of encouragement, then encourage. The gift of prayer will then pray. The gift of service, then serve. Thank God for his gifts by using them to the best of your ability. My friends, today is Pentecost, the forgotten festival of the Christian church. Never forget Pentecost. It's our birthday. It's the birthday of the Christian church. Pentecost helps us remember the Holy, who, the Holy Spirit who's working in our hearts and lives through, through God's word and sacrament, sacraments. It reminds us of the wonderful gifts the Holy Spirit gives. And it reminds us to use those gifts to God's glory. So celebrate Pentecost. Write Hallmark and try to get them to make Pentecost cards. Because Pentecost is something to celebrate. Happy Pentecost. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.